I promised you more Home Assistant content and here we are. This time with a really nice dashboard. Never in a million years I thought I'd be tinkering with Home Assistant, but it has its perks. And I'm a person that really likes e ink displays. Why? Because they are kind of cool. I like the idea of how they look, I like the idea that they take very little power, and I like the idea that many companies are actually noticing this and releasing uh, interesting devices. Now, what I've got today, it's a Seed Studio e-paper display with Xiao ESP32 C3 module inside it. Just bear in mind that the actual copy I've got is a prototype, I received it early, and it comes with a 3D printed case. Now, if you're going to make a order yourself, you're gonna have a slightly more polished version of this device. My love for e-paper displays isn't new, however, what's new is my love for a dashboard, especially energy dashboard, that harvest the data from my solar panels, because now I have solar panels, I can monitor how much energy or how much electricity my house is using and how much it's gonna cost me all of that. And while for some time I had Node-RED-based automation that displayed that in a dashboard, and I was quite pleased with the data received, it was never as polished as the one that is available in Home Assistant. Something that I recently found out and I'm enjoying uh, looking at because it gives me an idea how much basically I'm paying and how I can utilize my solar panels to offset some of these costs. And while my panels are leased, and there's a couple of years left on the lease and I've got it with a house, there isn't really much I can do with it electrically. So I thought I'm going to focus on kind of retrieving as much information I could and this is where the star of this show comes in. So the Seed Studio e-paper display. So this comes with a really nice e-paper display. This is seven and a half inch, sporting a resolution of 800 pixels by 480. As previously mentioned, this is powered by Xiao module. Uh, in this case, the Xiao modules are basically uh, Seed Studio flagship development boards, and they come with variety of different modules from the ones containing SP32 boards to a likes they're using RP2040, etc. So you can always get a module with a microcontroller you think it's best for your use case scenario. And to be fair, this is a quite simple device because the e-paper e display is connected to the show board via SPI interface. There is a battery and battery charger on battery management inside. And this device, uh, well, connects to 2.4 GHz. Wi-Fi has a Bluetooth support and apparently lasts up to three months on the battery power alone, but that's gonna depend on the refresh rate, whether the shower module is connected to Wi-Fi constantly and the sleep policies. Running this connected constantly to your internet and having it pull data every 30 seconds yielded to about three to four hours of battery performance for me. At the side, you've got USB Type-C port for charging and programming, which is the port of the shower module. And at the back under foldable stand, you'll have boot and reset buttons uh, to access. There is also a power on and off switch in case you want to control the power of this device manually. I'm pretty sure you can imagine many different things that you can use this shower module for. However, I'm going to focus on well, making this lovely dashboard that I've built from scratch, and I'm gonna walk you through the process. Now you have to bear in mind two things before we dive into this. First, I'm still new to Home Assistant, I'm learning, so if you're gonna find a better way of doing something, go ahead and do it or let me know in the comments and I'll take it on board. I'm keen to learn new things. Second of all, everything that I'm gonna walk you through it is basically described in an article that I wrote on my website. So if you want to go and grab the code without type, trying to type it in from a screen, why would you do that? Then head to the description of this video. You're gonna find a link to the device and a link to the tutorial. That way it's gonna be slightly easier for you. Also, since Seed Studio have pretty good getting started tutorial on how to get this connected, how to use the ESP home, because that's what we're gonna be using to send the data to the display and out of the display. I'm not going to really cover that in detail. I'm going to just show you the 
basics of things that worked well for me. And now diving into the configuration of this display so you could understand what I've done and you could edit it to your liking. First, we need to get this device ESP Home ready, and we do that by flashing the firmware. So in order to do it, you just go to web.esphome.io and you'll be able to flash initial configuration for this device that will allow this device to be discoverable by ESP Home and basically to set up Wi-Fi credentials. The process only takes a couple of moments and it's super simple. After you got that flash will prompt you for more Wi-Fi credentials and your device will be available to your ESP home management system. Now, in order to enable that, you have to go then to Home Assistant and, well, download the add-on to the Home Assistant. There's a couple of add-ons actually you you're supposed to add for this tutorial, so I'm just going to walk you quickly through that too. In the settings and add-ons, this is where you find your add-ons for Home Assistant, you'll find ESP Home Device Builder and also look for File Explorer. I'm gonna explain how we're gonna utilize that, but install both and make sure you're gonna get yourself familiar with it. Once you've got that installed, we need to well, add a new device. So navigate to the ESP Home Builder and you'll be able to add a new device. Now you can name it to your liking, but select ESP32 C3. At some point on the screen, you're going to have also authentication key. This is important and you'll be able to add that in the configuration of your ESP home. And that way uh, your ESP home will be able to talk to home assistant back and forward. Obviously we want that because we want to obtain some of the information from the home assistant dashboard and get it on our ESP home device. To make sure that everything was working okay and I'm not spending my time on something that I shouldn't, I used one of the Seed Studio examples just to test it out, see if I can flash it. And in order to do it, there's a couple of different ways to do it. But my home assistant is currently running on Super 6 cluster, which is hidden away and I can't plug it in directly. But fortunately, you can do it via computer. Instead of going through a process of certifying my home assistant to HTTPS so I could do it this way, I've been the option to compile my firmware on the instance of Home Assistant and then downloading it to my computer and then using a humble USB Type-C cable to get it flashed again using the web browser. And that process was pretty neat and I found it quite convenient. In order to test it out in your ESP Builder, simply just edit one of the YAML files, copy and paste code from the Seed Studio tutorial flash it, download it to your computer, and then use ESP Home web interface to flash the firmware. Happy with this, I started to mock around for a couple of hours trying to figure out what entities I can use, how to add the sensors. I wasn't really familiar with all of that. So if you have an idea how Home Assistant works, you're probably already ahead where I was when I started with this display. But after a couple of hours, I kind of had a vague idea of what information I want to download to my display, what I want to have in there, and how to retrieve that information from a home assistant and put it in here. So once that was working, I had to sit down and actually design the dashboard because all of the elements in here are designed by me from scratch. I looked online for some UI builder tools that I could deploy to get everything kind of in order, but I didn't really find anything. And for the most part, I was just experimenting with putting things in a locations where I think it's gonna look well, flashing it, checking it, and then modifying the code. But that left me with one single task to do. I needed to sit down. I whipped out my Remarkable, which is also a ink display, and I kind of designed the interface that you see now. It wasn't exactly this, but it gave me an idea how I want to space out the elements and, well, based on that, I started searching for how I can make it work. If you wonder how I get my energy consumption information into Home Assistant in the first place, uh, be aware that I have a Shelly 3EM uh, deployed inside of my electrical cabinet, which is linked to my solar panels and to grid. This way I am able to measure how much electricity my solar panels 
are depositing into my local grid and how much electricity I draw when the solar panels are either being overwhelmed or um, they're not working because it's dark or cloudy outside. So that's how it works. And obviously I was able to hook it up using Shell integration in the Home Assistant. And that's how I get all the information to USB Home. Let's start with the weather forecast element because that will show you how to import fonts. And importing fonts is obviously desired if you want to style your fonts and display information in different ways. But if you want, but if you want to have nice icons, there are a couple of things that I needed to do. Remember when I told you to download the add-on file explorer? We're going to use that to actually upload a couple of fonts into the ESP home directory, as this is how I basically added extra fonts to it. There are a couple of other ways you can do it. You can point the font into a live location network, but I wanted to have it there so I'd never have to worry about it. In hindsight, I probably should have sticked them in a folder, but for now, it will work just fine. And one of the fonts I needed to display the weather was huh, Noto Emoji Variable Font, which I promptly downloaded, but to make it work, I have to add uh, specific glyphs that I wanted to use and create a mapping between the weather conditions and the glyphs. And basically, this way, I pull the information from uh, the Home Assistant about the weather, um, I check what the weather condition is, and map correct symbol so that I can then display it on the display. All very nice and simple. I also translated those uh, weather conditions into human readable form, getting rid of dashes and underscores, so win-win. At this point, it's worth noting that my configuration, I tried to describe it quite well for you so you understand where you can make changes, that when you set new sensors, the sensors are being split into two categories. There are sensors that are, uh, obtain a string-alike output, so they don't output numbers and the sensors that will just give you a number and that will kind of define how you process that information just so you know. The second thing I wanted to add was the date and the day of the second the second thing I wanted to add was the date and day of the week and that was actually harder than I anticipated because there was no entity responsible for that and what I had to do well I had to learn about helpers. So we're going to pause in here, we're going to jump back to Home Assistant and I'm going to show you what helpers I needed to create in order to make it happen. So current date and current date of the week are simple sensors that are basically get set by my whole assistant to select a value and that's how I get away with it. And then it creates an entity ID which I can use in my YAML configuration. Bear in mind that if you're going to follow my tutorial, check the naming convention because whatever you're going to use to name your helpers, it's going to be needing adjustments in your YAML file. So if you can keep the names consistent, that'll be perfect and it's going to make your life easier. Apart from creating those two sensors, I've also created electricity meter. There's an option for that and I've defined all the values in there. And why did I do it? Because I wanted to grab information about my power use and assign that power use to specific dates. So as you can see, there is a couple of related helpers on that list, including the standing charge. I'm surprised that the regular dashboard doesn't really have a standing charge in the cost calculations. I've added the tariff price. It's only gonna support one tariff. I have one tariff, so sorry if you have more, you'll have to figure this out. And I've created a bunch of numbers, helpers numbers, which specify to corresponding days of the week. So one through seven from Monday to Sunday. And I need this because in a, this little bar section, which you're gonna be covering in a second, I want to display all that information there. Now that we have that covered, let's jump back to the file explorer because we need to add something to configuration YAML. Basically, it's a small template that tells to set up two sensors and set them with correct date and correct day of the week as required. This way I can pull that information to my panel. Easy. Where I really had a good time was creating usage cost a bar chart. Now, by default, bar charts aren't available. You cannot make them. This isn't a bar chart. It's a bunch of squares programmed in such a way that they look like one. And I really had a good time trying to brain this out and how to make it work, especially that, well, these squares are drawn upside down and I had to align them based on the values. And there is a, a little bit of clever math involved. If you take a look at my YAML code, you'll understand what I mean. But first we need to go to, well, again, the file uh, explorer, go to automation in Home Assistant and paste this lovely automation that I've created. Now it's very important that you check 
the names of the helpers that you created, because that's going to be important when dealing with those files later in the YAML configurations of the ESP home. Every midnight, the home assistant will check how much electricity I've used and assign that to select a day of the week for me, so I could make my calculations of how much it did cost me. If you look at my YAML, you'll notice there's a couple of setup uh, variables that I use to position the bar charts, define how wide it is, and define my labels. And then I basically position every single square based on uh, the usage and on the label with calculation of the daily cost, including the standing charge. So it's nice and robust. The last area on this panel is the chart at the bottom. It shows you three information. First, there is a projected forecast of solar energy that I'm going to harvest. That gets updated every hour. Second of all, we have a solar power generation. So the more I, energy I get, the higher the chart. And lastly, I've got grid usage. So the more energy I'm using, the thickest of the lines go down and shows the actual consumption. That helps me to understand how much weather comes into play. It kind of creates a overview of um, well, the entire day use. And while on this video is set to one hour, by default, when I'm using it, it is set to 12 hours, so it gives me a breakdown of entire day. Thankfully, my job here was only to create the labels and to map my sensors correctly because there is a library of a chart that you can use in ESP Home and generate this really nicely. And I think it's looking quite promising. I gotta say, I really had a fun creating all of it. And the most tedious part of the work was creating user interface and making everything align neatly because that took some testing. And each time I had to flash a new image and wait for it to update but I'm quite pleased with the result. Now, this isn't the finished form. I've still got a couple of ideas, a couple of I need to learn, but I'll be adding some more functionality to this panel and I will get back to it. Now, I've discovered that you can design different pages, so you can switch between this display and then switch to another page, but if you notice, there is no a single button in here that would allow to interact with what's on display. But don't panic because the shower module inside of this 7.5 inch e-paper display has a lot of different GPIOs available. So you could hook up extra things like extra buttons that you can use to change different pages and different, display different information based on your interaction. You'll be able to add built-in temperature and humidity sensor and so much more. And I know your version of this device will come with a nice enclosure, but Seed Studio has made these files for the enclosure, 3D printed enclosure, available to you. So you could just open it up and start editing by adding extra buttons, sensor, or a bigger battery. It all depends on how you want to utilize this panel. So guys, I am not going to pretend to be a home assistant guru. There's lots of people that does it so much better, but I had absolute blast playing with this and designing my new dashboard. It's gonna live on my desk, and over time, I'm sure I'm gonna adapt it to my liking. And if you want to uh, see a follow-up on this, then you know how YouTube works. I'm not going to explain it all for you. Just bear in mind that in the description of this video, you're gonna find a link to the panel itself and to a tutorial that's gonna walk you through all the changes that I've done to a YAML file, so you could make something like that and use it as a base for editing uh, your layout and the information that you would like to display. As for now, big thanks for watching and I'm definitely gonna see you in the next video. Take care, bye.